Praise you, everybody. And I wanted to just talk today uh, and remind you all about uh, the importance of, of following the guidelines and instructions of our creator, which more and more people are getting away from. But the more concern is the so-called believers or Christians that are not defending, keeping the guidelines and instructions of our creator and teaching people it's okay to break the guidelines and instructions of our creator. And when you use guidelines and instructions in that word, then people can resonate with what you're saying. But when you use the word law or Torah, uh, many people say we're no longer under that because that's an Old Testament thing. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say that uh, the Torah is just a Jewish thing or only for Jewish people. It's for all of Yah's people, those that desire to follow uh, a wonderful creator in the in the likeness of Yahshua, a wonderful Messiah, who set the example of us of how to live. And this is why he's known as the living Torah. But we have a problem today. First, we got uh, the Christian church that primarily teaches that we're no longer under the law, if they want to so-called call it. But uh, we were never under uh, a law. We were under the guidelines and instructions and, and, and the statutes and commands of our creator when we agreed to the covenant with him that we would follow him and trust him and believe in him and his ways. And when we use the word law, you know, it kind of gives a, 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 a different idea because people say we're not under the law. But were we ever under a law or were we under the uh, a covenant that we've agreed? So when people uh, get married, they make a covenant to stay together and to be faithful. You know, if we know, all, you know, so that's a covenant. It's, it's not necessarily a law, but then again, it is. It is a law if you want to take it to that court system and so on. But regardless, I don't see married people in the church saying we're no longer under the law, so we don't have to be faithful to each other. But you're under the covenant that you made with our creator to be with, you know, faithful to your wife, the one he, you supposedly believe, provided for you. So when we accept Yeshua, the one they call Jesus as our Messiah, we're now saying that we're going to accept this covenant that the forefathers have accepted and just because some of the forefathers were from the uh, tribe of judah and 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 made this covenant as a matter of fact they abraham and and isaac you know we we look at the different tribes i mean the tribe of judah started with the children of of jacob and we look at you know, all the people in scripture from uh, Adam, and we look at uh, all the people in scripture uh, in the original covenant prior to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, who weren't necessarily Jewish, but they still kept the guidelines and instructions of our creator. And then we look at those that came out of the uh, Egypt uh, when Abraham went in and he took them to 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 come into the promised land with them. They were required to keep the guidelines and instructions of our creator. So you have a funny thing here today because you have uh, the morality of living according to our creator and you have a bunch of Christians saying we're no longer under the law, but yet they keep many of the moral guidelines and instructions of our creator. You have many non-believers in the world keeping the moral and guidelines and instructions of our creator. This is why if you see somebody uh, in the media do something that's uh, very immoral, there's a big uproar in the world today. Uh, it, that's, that's because of the sin that's flooding the world everywhere. That's starting to fade. But when you look at the scriptures as a whole, it, you know, it's not a Jewish thing. It's not, you know, somebody told me we shouldn't keep the, the, the law, and they go back to the law of the Torah, because when you keep the Torah, and all Torah means is guidelines and instructions, but it's a, if you use a Jewish word now, all of a sudden people are saying, well, that's not for us. Well, that's like saying, you know, the, 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 the word Christ is a Greek word, so we're not going to, you know, follow Yeshua, which makes no sense at all. Uh, whatever language you use, you, you know, translate into your own language. It's a guideline and instruction. So somebody told me, well, we're no longer under the guidelines and instructions of the law or the Torah because uh, that's putting the Jewish traditions on people of other traditions. 
which makes no sense at all. And, but this is the excuses people want to make to continue to live in sin. Because our creator isn't a creator of neutrality. He, you know, he, he, he's complete. He wants us to not just be neutral. He wants us to be fully committed to him 100% and not just in some areas and all areas. So to say you keep, you know, his word and in most areas, but not all is just making an excuse to continue in the areas that you pick and choose and not want to do this. And it creates a, a, a tremendous problem out there today. You know, so I understand the idea of of uh, a person who first hears about uh, the guidelines and instructions about creator when they're they're much older, and let's say, for example, a, circum a circumcision, and they haven't been circumcised, and they're like maybe fifty five, and they're first hearing this. Well, the first issue is how have you went fifty five years and never heard this? And the real issue with the circumcision is not you it's, it's your parents who should have known this so when you were eight years old if you were a male you would have been circumcised you know we can only do what we're bound to do or we, we what we're we're moved to do as believers so you know saying somebody has to be uh circumcised if they're uh not born with wise enough parents to follow the guidelines and instructor is the same idea of a tattoo. You know, you don't need to get, if you got a tattoo when you were a teenager and now you're like 50 years old and you decide, oh, I want to follow the guidelines and instructions of our creator, it says not to get a tattoo. You know, that's something you've done in your former life. That's a sin you've done in your former life. There may be certain consequences to that, but that's not a salvation issue. Yes, you broke the Torah, but that doesn't mean you don't follow the Torah. Now, could you get rid of it? Yes. You can get rid of the tattoo later on, but it, it doesn't make that difference. If you're moved to, to have the original body that your creator wanted you to have and to not have a tattoo, thankfully so, you can do it. It's, very, it's much more painful to do it. But if that's what you're being moved to do, then go ahead and do it. But that doesn't mean that you're excused from following all the Torah because you didn't do that when you were younger. This is something that, okay, this is something that was done. And the tattoo is worse than circumcision because that tattoo was on your own thing. You've been a teenager when you got that tattoo. So you had whatever, 15 to 20 years to figure that out. But at least with that, with circumcision, that's on your parents. Because they're the one that should have known the Torah enough. When you're eight years old, you're not going to make an understandable decision about getting circumcised or something like that. And this is what Paul explains when he talks about uh, what really matters is the circumcision of the heart and the examples that were set forth in the Torah and understanding these things and uh, uh, reading the principle of what the point is of these guidelines and instructions, because I believe is not just a point of of reading this these instructions and guidelines and not understanding why, but to understand or to study and research and pray about, well, why did our creator say this? Why did our creator say to stone the disobedient child? Why did our creator say to not mingle with those that uh, believe other gods? Why did our creator uh, give us these guidelines and instructions and commandments? And when we start to get down to the reason why, we start to see the heart of our creator and the reason of our creator and the way he wants us to do. And we look at how so many people in the world today that call themselves believers are not really living in peace and shalom. And I'm not only talking about Christians out there, but I'm also talking about those that 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 say they follow Torah and, and believe in our creator. There's still, there's no peace and shalom. So when you understand why he said to keep the Sabbath, you do it with joy. When you understand why he said to set your slave free after seven years and restore them and give them everything, you do it with joy. When you understand the idea about uh, maybe tithing or giving your money or not idolizing money, you do it with joy. But when you don't understand that if you're doing it, you're doing it with a hard heart, you're not really doing it. So it all comes down to, uh, you know, the understanding of this, but it also comes down to our heart, to desire to follow our creator and so on. In Psalms, in Psalms it says, starts off, it says, the joys of those who not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join with mockers. So they give you three 
three situations here, the advice of the wicked, and whether that could be from the advice from your friends that do not believe in our creators. Matter of fact, the Torah tells you to kill anyone that's trying to get you to, to follow other gods. You know, people don't bring that up, but they tell you to kill them and say, should we literally kill them? Well, there are laws in our land today that will put us in, <laughs> in jail if we just go ahead around and killing people. But understand the heart of what our creator was trying to say and why he was trying to say this. You should have nothing to do with these people that are giving you advice to follow other gods or do other things that are go against our creator. You know, because, uh, you know, you either become like the people around you or they become like you. And chances are, if you're not boldly preaching the word of our creator or have a heart for our creator, and you're hanging around people that are not following him and his ways, you know, you're going to start coming around like them. And then it says, or stand around with sinners. You know, and people don't get this, but they need to understand that sin Living against the guidelines and instructs our creator is a contagious disease. And this is the way we need to treat it. And if we continue to hang around with, with uh, people that are not following the guidelines and scriptures, eventually we get that idea. Well, they're not doing this and they seem to be okay. They're breaking the Sabbath and they seem to be okay. They're living a life like the world and they have a lot of money and they seem to be okay. So you start, your mind starts thinking and you start listening to the enemy that we could do that too. So don't follow the advice of the wicked. Don't hang around with the sinners. And then it says, don't join in with the mockers. You understand the heart of our creator and he wants us to, uh, to love our enemies so much so that we have a heart for them to know the truth and that the truth would set them free. We're not going to kick people when they're down. You know, it says in, in verse two of Psalms one, that the, the delight, and it's a bad translation because it says in the law of the Lord, meditating on a day and night. It says, but they, the joy, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, but they delight in the guidelines and instructions of our creator, the statutes, the covenant that was made with our creator, meditating on a day and night. You know, continuously thinking about the guidelines and instructions of our creator, the blessing that came. And you know who was like this? David was like this. And we see in Psalms 119, this is what David did. You know, you might as well insert here in Psalms uh, 1 verse 2, they delight in the, uh, in the guidelines and instructions of Yah meditating a day and night. You might as well insert here, in, instead of day, you can put the word David. King David, who had a heart of Yah, delighted in the law of Yah, the guidelines and instructions of Yah, the Torah. You know, so and we'll, we'll look at that. We'll look at that heart. It says, you know, it talks about the fruit of scripture, you know, and and so important for us to get this and understand this. You look at David in 119 and the delightful of this is uh, so it starts off in 119 of Psalms with joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of our creator. Joyful are those who obey his and it says the word laws, but let's say the covenant. And search for him with all their hearts. So look at Psalms 1 and Psalms 119. In Psalms 1, it says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice or stand around with sinners or join with mockers, but they delight in the instructions of our Creator, the Torah, the statutes, the commandments of our Creator, meditating on them day and night. And it also says in the next verse, they will prosper in all they do. But then we go to Psalms 119. Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of our Creator. Joyful are those who obey His guidelines and instructions and search for Him with all their hearts. And when I read this and I see many of the people that are saying, we don't need to keep the Torah, we don't need to follow the instructions of our Creator, a lot of them are missing joy. A lot of them are missing the joy of Yah. 
And many of them might be listening and saying, well, you know, I have all the joy I need. Well, they're getting on these debates, yelling and screaming at other people that we don't need to follow the guidelines and instructions of our creator. I don't see joy in that. I don't see joy in living in a way like that. You know, and then we go back when we went back to uh, Psalms 1 verse 1, and it says they do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around for sinners or, 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 or the mockers. And then when we go and we we go back to Psalms verse and verse three, it says they do not compromise with evil and they walk only, only in his paths. You know, you have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. Hallelujah. And then verse five, David saying, oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. So. You have Christians out there or people out there that try to come on the internet and say, we no longer need to follow the, the guidelines and instructions of our creator. Then we have King David and scripture. Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. You know, then I will not be ashamed when I uh, compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteous regulations. I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your decrees and please don't give up on me. And it goes in to talking about the purity of our creator and how to be protected, how a young person could stay pure by obeying the words of our creator. Nowhere does it said by obeying the words in the Old Testament or the New Testament, because that's a big problem when you have, when you make one book into two and you say, oh, the New Testament releases us from the law. No, it doesn't release from the law. It says to take this most important part that our creator gave us, the guidelines and instructions, and to not have it on stone, but it should be in your, uh, in your heart. You should be living there without even having to think about them. So not only should you not have to defend and, and compromise and think about, should I be keeping the Sabbath or should I be uh, not be eating unclean foods, doing things like this? To the heart of a believer, this should automatically be part of what you're doing. It's not about, oh, I'm making it too hard for other people. The ludicrousy that, that, that somebody told me, well, you're, what are you, exact words of your serpent, the Jewish traditions on non-Jewish people. That's, that's absolutely ridiculous. You know, it's, 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 it says here, you know, you, you, you're not letting the guidelines and instructions make your life worse. You're making them better. And this is the, our Bible, the scriptures that we have. King David himself, I will study your commands and reflect on your ways. I will delight in your decrees and not forget your word. You know, but there's too many people out there that literally teach we don't need to do this. You know, it's like, the, the the new believers, the so-called Christians, are fighting to follow the commands and instructions. They're desired. They want to give up all of their sin. They want to get away from their unholy life. And then they go to some church building. And now the, the preacher there will say, I know you're struggling with this new walk. I know you're struggling to, to come into this new life. But don't worry about it. You don't have to change. You don't have to change what you were doing. You don't have to change what you were living. Just say a few words and you'll be fine. That's not what that's not what the scriptures say. The scriptures say you do have to change. And when when you become a believer, something's supposed to change. Your heart. And your heart's going to dictate your actions. So you're no longer to love the things that the world loves. You're no longer to act the way the world acts. You know, when you find yourself doing these things, you put yourself by, right back into the situation where the warning when the children went into the promised land was to, to separate and divide yourself from the people that were living there so you do not go after their gods. So you do not go after their gods. And this is what happens to people today. I believe we should have people in our lives that are non-believers to minister to them, to set examples for them, and to guide them in the right way. But when you start liking their ways of living more than the ways of our creator we run into this problem and and this is what we see happening people no longer want to follow the advice the instructions the guidelines and if you want to use the words laws of our creator 
but they have no problem running around following the world's ways. The lightning knows, but David says here, how I delight in your commands and how I love them. I honor and love your commands. I meditate on your decrees. Now, when I see Christians debating that we no longer need to follow the Torah and the guidelines and instructions, which, by the way, they follow like 90% of them, but they don't want to do all of them. So they say, oh, well, we don't have to do that. Yeah, it's a choice. You don't have to, but do you? Well, if you don't have to do that, why do you follow 90% of it to begin with? Because you're picking and choosing. But our creator tells us not to fight this. He tells us to delight in it. To delight in the guidelines and instructions of our creator. You know, and for those of you that want to bring up the, the idea about the, the circumcision, well, look at the idea of the tattoo. You know, and, and, and don't let, you know, what your parents didn't do keep you from following our creator's guidelines and instructions. So get the heart behind it to understand why we're supposed to do this. And this is the heart that David's talking about when, when, he, when he talks about his, his life and his faith and what he wants to follow in Psalms 119. You know, it says, and may I blameless and keep, may I be blameless in keeping your decrees that I will never be ashamed. You see, the world today, or godly uh, or ungodly people are, uh, are ashamed to follow our creator. They're ashamed to dress modest. They're ashamed to talk without cursing. They're ashamed to, to live a life of purity. You know, because so many people in the world today are not. But we shouldn't be ashamed to represent our creator. We should have the heart of David, even though those mock us. We should stand up as it's the greatest witness of Yeshua in our lives. And, the, and, and like it says in Psalms 1, the trees planted, it says, it says that there will be like a, trees planted in the riverbank. This is those that are righteous, bearing fruit each season, and their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. But not the wicked. They are worthless shafts scattered by the wind. Sinners have no place among the holy, for Yah watches over the path of the holy, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. So let's talk about the path for a moment. Yah says, know the plans I have for you. They are for good and not disaster to give us a future and give us a hope. But then we got the path of the wicked. And it says in the scriptures, there's a way before each person that seems right, but ends in death. And they talk about the premature death of because as a result of your wickedness, Yeshua came and, and, and gave us a chance to, to live the life according to the times we were supposed to live. You know, people get this uh, wrong. Yeshua didn't die for, uh, you know, he didn't die to take away death. He died to take away a penalty of death. So what's the penalty of death? The penalty of death is dying before our time as a result of our sin. So we all die if Yeshua came for, you know, died for us. You know, we wouldn't, nobody would die, but we die. But the scriptures talk about the righteous person living in a good peace and shalom, a long life of peace and shalom. But, you know, it says in the scriptures, a wicked person shall not live out half their days because the penalty of death is still on them. Yeshua removed the penalty of the death to those who decide to live a righteous life. Now, you might not have been living a righteous life when he made that covenant to do that. But now you have your opportunity. And that opportunity is if you follow his guidelines and instructions, you will live a long life of peace and shalom. But if you continue to live a life of sin, that death penalty is still on you today. And it might not be given to you down by a court system where you're getting a death penalty for breaking the Sabbath or something like this. But there are eternal consequences of not living according to the guidelines and instructions of our creator. And as shown all throughout scripture, if you live against the guidelines and instructions of our creator, the burden or the yoke will be so heavy on you that your life will end one way or the other many years before they should. And whether it's through mental 
diseases and disorders and stuff because you don't have true faith in our creator, or whether it's because of uh, of some of the people carrying out this sentence, if you are not living against the guidelines and instructions of our creator, uh, you are not accepting uh, what Yeshua did in taking away that death penalty of dying prematurely. And we look in the scripture of King Hezekiah who decided to uh, repent for his, uh, his sin. And on his deathbed, Yahweh added 15 years to his life. 15 years to his life. So death wasn't taken away. The death penalty of dying prematurely was taken away. And this is what Yeshua wants to do to bring us in covenant with him. The new covenant is about having the, the Torah, the instructions on our heart. So we'll desire to follow him. And we'll understand repentance. We'll understand the joy that he wants us to live in, the plans that he has for us, the good and not disaster, the future and hope. Well, you're rejecting that. You're rejecting that when you reject what Yeshua has done for us in this death penalty. So a lot of Christians will say, well, we're not saved by the law and salvation doesn't come through works and we don't need to do the works. So be it. Your eternal, according to scriptures, your eternity and where you spend it is going to be a result of your true confession in Yeshua, our Messiah. Whether you're living according to the guidelines and instructions of our Creator or not, have you confessed Yeshua, our Messiah? So be it. If that's your your take on it, that we don't need to live according to the guidelines and instructions of our Creator, it's solely not according to our works, and so on. Well, you're going to get that premature death as a result of that penalty as a consequence of your actions and then you're going to have your own situation where you're going to have to answer to our creator for the life you chose to live and the covenant you chose to follow and regardless if you believe this covenant is on you or not take the example of the people in scripture that that trusted in our creator the example of david who said i meditate on your word day and night you know, somebody who deserved 100% to have that penalty of death as a result of their actions, but because their heart was in the right place. And they desired Yah so much that Yah truly did what Yeshua was doing for us and taking away that death penalty. You know, so a wicked man uh, shall not die before his time. It says in Ezekiel, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to follow the ways so they will live, so they will have the life. And then you can take that on the important question of eternity and what comes with that. So when we look at the words obey and we look at the word law and we look at these words, it definitely puts a a, a, a thing on people that they want to look for ways around that. But when you have the heart of Yah, you're going to be like David who said in Psalms 119, I obeyed your guidelines and instructions for I love them very much. I obey your commandments because you know everything I do. And praising him day and night and hating falsehood and loving his instructions. So how many of you love our Creator's instructions? Do you defend keeping the words of our Creator? Or do you try to debate with other people why we don't have to? It says a lot about your heart and where you are. And you might not think so, but think about your peace and your shalom when you go to sleep at night. You know, do you feel pridefully good that you debated somebody to tell them we don't need to follow the, the scriptures? You know, what spirit is leading you if that's the case? You talk about the enemy giving people's lies. Somebody can actually go on the internet and debate somebody for two hours why they shouldn't follow our creator and supposedly call themselves a believer and then feel good about that and have a, a arrogant, prideful smile and say, oh, I did my part. You know, I didn't put this burden on people. You know, and then there are other people out there that truly don't 
understand or comprehend how we could see it. Our creator has not yet opened up their eyes. They're not doing it in a prideful, deceitful way. They, they think they're helping others. But still, the word speaks for itself, and the word says what it says. You know, and Yeshua didn't come away with it with any of the guidelines and instructions. And the ones that are still applicable to us today are the ones that we should be doing our best to observe, to follow. Understanding the, the grace and the room and the patience that our creator gives us when we don't do them. But if we have our heart in the right place to see what changes. King David had his heart in the right place. He still messed up. He messed up big time. He deserved the penalty of death. But because his heart was in the right place, Yeshua didn't put that penalty on him. Our creator didn't make him suffer the consequence of that penalty. King Hezekiah repented. And because of that, he was released from that death penalty of premature death. And we also have that opportunity. What we've done in the past, how we lived a life in the past, that's not what is going to matter. It's where your heart is this day and moving forward. So I pray that people can have the right heart and use his word accordingly as a light for their path so they're not stuck in the darkness and their heart will be like David. Their heart to follow the guidelines and instructions. Not to debate, but to praise those who are, who are teaching that, that we need to do that. So uh, uh, that's my word for today. And I thank you all for listening. Please share this with others. May Yah be with you this day and always. Hallelujah and shalom, shalom.